Welcome to the Own Your Family, Family, where real stories and proven formulas are shared about leaving the rat race so you can achieve freedom and spend more quality time with your family. Get ready, mompreneurs and dadpreneurs, to get inspired by earning from home, living healthy, and aspiring for more in life with your hosts, Renat and Katrina. Hi, it's Katrina for Own Your Family. In this episode, allow me to share with you the book summary of Financial Freedom by Grant Sabatier. Grant has done a fantastic job breaking down how financial freedom can be attainable through his story and with practical tips. I love how he shows how side hustles can be a path towards financial independence and how to define your own financial independence path. This is a great book and I highly recommend it. It has lots of great practical tips, but the best part is it changed your mindset and philosophy. Yes, about money, but about so much more than that. Life, that's what it's about. Freedom. How do you find it? So give this book a try. If you are anything like most people, you probably constantly worry about money. It does not have to be that way though. Grant Sabatier retired at age 30 after making over $1 million in just five years. In Financial Freedom, he shares his top tips on how you can become financially independent as well. Having $1 million in the bank and being able to retire at age 30 sounds like the dream, right? Well, Grant Sabatier made it a reality and shares how to do so in financial freedom. Money is probably one of the most stressful things to worry about. But in fact, managing your money and making it grow is not rocket science. Sabatier shows how you can optimize your lifestyle, make your money go further, and still have fun along the way. Get ready to learn how to reach financial independence. The Road to Financial Independence Grant Sabatier tried to follow the conventional path to wealth and security. He went to a top university, studied hard and got good grades, and even managed to secure a job before graduating. He then started working for an analytics company, thinking that he was on the sure path to financial independence. However, he was making big trade-offs. His office was a four-foot-wide cubicle in a scarcely ventilated, dark office park two hours away from where he lived. His job was so exhausting that when he got home, he would not be able to do much except for watching some TV. Nevertheless, he was so worried about his next day at work that he would not be able to go to sleep before eventually crawling out of bed again the next morning at 4.50 a.m. And for what? Sabatier was leaving from paycheck to paycheck as he made just about enough money to cover his expenses. He did not save any money and eventually was fired from his job because he was not making the company enough money either. That was how he found himself back with his parents, age 24, with $2.62 in his bank account. If this story sounds familiar to you, you are not alone in that. According to surveys, 69% of Americans have less than $1,000 in savings, so they, so they live just one disaster away from poverty and homelessness. The situation is even direr for millennials. In the U.S., Millennials have an average income of $35,592 a year, which is less than half of what their parents made at the same age. On top of that, the average student loan debt is $36,000. So it is no wonder that retirement in three or four decades seems impossible to most. 
Sabatier decided that he had had enough. He wanted financial independence, which for him meant saving $1 million and retiring as soon as possible. And after studying countless books and blogs on financial independence or advice, he actually managed to do so five years later. The good news is you can do it too, and it is a lot easier than you might think. The way you have been taught to think about money is incorrect, incomplete, or absolute. You don't have to give up on the small things you enjoy or track every penny you spend in order to become financially independent. All it takes is a different approach to thinking about and looking at money. Seven Stages of Financial Freedom before you can start your journey toward financial freedom, you need to figure out your goal. What exactly does financial freedom mean to you? Maybe it means having $1 million in your bank account, but maybe it just means having enough money to work part-time and spend more time with your family. Financial freedom ultimately comes down to a few factors, where you live, what kind of life you want to live, and what brings you joy. According to Sabatier, there are seven stages of financial freedom. Number one, clarity. You have figured out where you are and where you want to go. Number two, self-sufficiency. You earn enough money to cover your own expenses. Number five, breathing room. You no longer live paycheck to paycheck. Number four, stability. You have six months of living expenses saved and bad debt paid. Number five, flexibility. You have two years of living expenses invested. Number six, financial independence. You can live off the income generated by your investments and work becomes optional. And number seven, Abundant wealth. You have more money than you'll ever need. With each stage you reach, you will feel more in control and less stressed about money. With lots of hustle, you can get to stage 5 within a few years, but getting to stage 6 will take the most effort. This step requires you to make money, save it, and invest it, which will take up a lot of your time. But all the time you invest will eventually translate into freedom for you. What is your number? To start your own journey to financial independence, you need to calculate your FI number or financial independence number. Maybe you have used an online retirement calculator before and been horrified by how much you have to work in order to retire in 40 years. But traditional retirement calculators usually do not factor in that your money can grow by itself if you invest it. Sabatier believes that the way to holistically determine how much money you need is by looking at the amount of money you need to live right now and then adjust this once a year as your circumstances change. You will also need to know your annual expenses, go through the last 12 months of expenses, and calculate your average expense. Then. The formula for figuring out your FI number is the following withdrawal rate percentage, X, your number, equals annual expenses. So, for example, if you were to spend $50,000 a year and you were withdrawing at the recommended rate of 4%, that would make your FI number $50,000 divided by 0.04 equals $1,250,000. Where are you now? Once you have figured out your goal, you should get some clarity on your finances. Where are you now on your road to financial independence? To find this out, you will have to calculate your net worth, 
which is probably the most important number in your financial life. Your net worth is the difference between your assets and your liabilities. Your assets are anything that you own that has value, like cash, jewelry, a house, a car, or investments. Liabilities are any kind of debt you owe, such as credit card, debts, mortgages, or student debts. To calculate your net worth, you simply need to subtract your total liabilities from your total assets. If you have a lot of debt, your net worth might actually be negative. Many people, including the author, have started out this way though and still manage to gain financial independence in a short space of time. If your net worth is negative, you will need to add this to your FI number. So, if your FI number was $1,250,000, but you have $20,000 debt, your actual FI number is $1,280,000. This includes interest. According to Sabatier, you should track your net worth number on a regular basis. He does so daily to keep an eye on his finances and to watch his net worth grow through compounding. Most importantly, do not let your emotions get in the way of making good financial decisions. Especially when investing money, people are prone to panic. Take the author as an example. When he first started investing, he bought $3,000 worth of stocks and lost $1,000 or $1,200 in the first week. Panicked, he sold his stocks. Had he kept them though, he could have more than doubled his money over the next few years. For investments to work, you need to be in for the long haul and get comfortable with taking risk. And contrary to accepted financial wisdom, you do not need to have paid off all your debts before you can start investing. Think differently about money. Now that you know your FI number and your net worth, it is time to radically shift the way you think about money. Let's start with a simple example. What's the cost of a cup of coffee? Three dollars, you might say. However, you forget that the money you put for the coffee is money lost to you forever. If you were to invest it instead, it could compound into a lot more. You need to start thinking about the true cost of each transaction. If you want to make the most of your money, you need to be mindful of how you spend it. Luckily, the author has compiled a list of 11 key questions you can ask yourself before a purchase to decide whether you really want to spend your money. You do not need to ask this before every purchase you make, but maybe save them to your phone or carry a copy in your wallet to stop yourself from spending money unnecessarily. You will quickly realize that most things are actually a lot more expensive than they appear to be. Before you can ask these questions, you will need to know your real hourly rate, how much money you are actually making. This includes the time spent outside your paid hours, preparing for work, commuting, etc. Once you have figured this out, you will have a real number to see how much of your time you are trading for anything you purchase. So here are the questions you should ask yourself before you buy anything. 11 ways to think about money before you buy anything. Number one, how happy will this purchase make me? Consider not only today, but also tomorrow next week or next month. Number two, how much money do I have to make to afford this? Remember that you pay for purchases in after-tax dollars, so you have to make more money than the listed price. Number three, how many hours of my life am I trading to afford this? Think about your real hourly rate. Number four, can I afford it? Never spend more than 2-3% to 3 of your net worth on a single purchase. Number 5. 
How do prices compare in terms of percenta percentages? If you have a choice between brands, look at the percentage, not the dollar difference in price. Number six, can I get it for less or trade for it? Always try to buy second hand. Number seven, how much am I spending on convenience? Maybe it would be cheaper to make the coffee at home instead of buying it at a coffee shop. Number eight, how much would this cost me each year or for the rest of my life? Recurring expenses add up over time. Number nine, what is the per use cost of this item? When buying something that you use frequently, you can calculate the cost of the item based on how often you will use it and how long it will last you. Number 10, how much will this money be worth in the future? Think about how much money you could make if you invested it instead. And number 11, how much time or freedom is this buying me in the future? Every dollar you save is freedom gained in the future. So here's our final notes. Becoming financially independent is a lot easier than you might think. Stop guilt tripping yourself for overspending and start getting some clarity on your finances. Financial freedom is an international bestseller. Corian Hicks wrote about it for the U.S. News and World Report. Financial freedom changed my life. Reading it showed me a new way of looking at money and work that's opened my eyes to how life ought to be lived. Grant's book will not only guide you to financial freedom, it'll teach you to stop being limited by conventions and what you think you can and cannot achieve. Here's our tip. Have a look at the seven stages of financial independence. Which stage are you at? Thanks for listening. Join our online family by signing up for your free account at www.ownyourfamily.com and begin your journey to freedom. Want to get there faster? Book a strategy call with us at ownyourfamily.com forward slash book a call. As always, be sure to leave a rating and subscribe to our podcast and channel so you never miss a future episode.